Well, welcome back, everybody. On your screen right now, you're having a look at this um, magnificent natural rock formation. And uh, Johan, my director, was telling me that there is a little bit of a rumor that goes around that the, uh, the shape of the uh, Foot Trekker Monument is actually based on this rock formation. All right, so if you know anything more than this, or if you think that this is not true, please let us know. So that's what we've been hearing here this morning. So have a look at it as we, uh, as we zoom that camera out and you have a look at it even more. So that is the possibility that the Fur Trekker Monument is based on that particular rock formation in Mapungubwe, this uh, beautiful World Heritage Site as we come to you live this morning on the launch of this day. Now, let's take a look at this uh, insert where South Africa really, I mean, I don't think I need to tell you that it is a country that is absolutely rich in history, in heritage, in natural beauty and in culture. And we often overlook and are not even aware that there is so much more to it that's right on our doorstep. And uh, you may just have some cultural history and heritage that you may not even know about. Now, a small fishing village of Irlands Bay on the Cape West Coast has its own best kept secret. Take a look. Elands Bay is a small fishing village on the Cape West Coast. Known as eBay to the surfing fraternity, it is a surface paradise and a popular holiday destination. But Elands Bay is also known as an important coastal archaeological area where caves and rock paintings shed light on the use of coastal habitats in the past. No other known area along the entire coastline of the West Coast concentrates a diversity of heritage resources of such high significance. And in 2009, Heritage Western Cape declared the Elands Bay Cave and most of Baboon Point, on which it's located as a provincial heritage site. The views across both land and sea were a key attraction that kept people returning to Baboon Point over many thousands of years. Even in colonial times, the site was chosen to erect World War II radar stations. And during the apartheid years, migrant laborers serving the local fishing industry stayed in buildings in close proximity to the caves. Today, visitors are still drawn to the site with its incredible views of the land and sea. It's easily accessible to the public, which has unfortunately led to vandalism in the past and highlights the need for continued protection. Ideally, you would like some sort of presence on site, so, so people who work in the area who are here daily to help people with more information about the site, some services, perhaps an information centre in the town um, about the site and the material that we've built up in Saros would be then available in the local community and visitors to the site would have a much more enriching experience coming to the site with this range of information guides and assistance about the particular characteristics of the site which make it such a special place. The Baboon Point Cave is the only site on the entire African continent where rock paintings can be found so close to the coast. The people who were making the handprints were probably pastoralists, so they were herding fat-tailed sheep. You can see a little fat-tailed sheep over there. Um, and this technology came in around 2,000 years ago to southern Africa. Um, it tells us a lot about the kind of people who were living here and what they were doing. Um, we know from the archaeological deposit that before the pastoralist people came here, there were later Stone Age people living in the cave. They would have painted these large earlands. They were foraging from the coast and picking up shells and um, fish and bringing them up here to eat. And then even earlier than that, during the last um, glacial period, the sea was about more than 30 kilometers away and people were then living at the coast eating shellfish but they were still occupying this cave eating no shellfish but more little bokies and earlands and things like that. And the descendants of those people still live in the area today. They make up the Seabreeze Fishing Village, which is just around Irlands Bay. Um, and they have a very vested interest in the site. They come here quite often. They do recognize its significance in terms of their particular heritage, but also in terms of the heritage that the site has for the whole country. Um, there's earlier stuff at the site that, that really links everyone who lives in South Africa today, because we know that the earliest kinds of people who looked like us and spoke like us and acted like us came from a time called the Middle Stone Age, and there's evidence of those kinds of people living at the site in the past. Today, like in the past, the relationship with the land of people living in the area is strengthened by the availability of fresh water in Falurin Flay. It's one of the biggest estuaries on the Cape West Coast, and this Ramsar wetland is home to no fewer than 232 types of birds. It's as much part of Ilans Bay as its heritage site 
and reinforces the value and importance of protecting our natural and cultural heritage. This is Linky Beerman for Morning Live, Elands Bay on the Cape West Coast. All right, let's uh, now take a little bit further at how Sara developed this idea of the new information system and some of the key issues that will be discussed later on today at uh, the conference uh, into basically sacred spaces and sites as well. To give us a clear indication, we're now joined by the CEO, uh, Mabato Ramakoshi. It's good to have you. Thank you so very much for being with us here on Morning Live. Thank you, Leanne. All right. Now, what is Sara's objective? Sara's objective really is to ensure that we store all South African heritage information from objects to arts, anything that you can think for, of as heritage will be in one system because that way South Africans will know what they own but before we had a problem where people will take our art out of the country and we would not even know about it. Yeah. Now with, with Sara's all type of information that is heritage resources is in there and then we can work with home affairs that if somebody takes this any type of object out of the country even at home affairs at the, at, at the borders they'll be able to identify that as something stolen so saris is one uh, portal where every information about our heritage will be stored and this is the first in, in international where a country can just with, with a, a press of a button can find whatever that they have in the system yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what, in terms of, of, of the main objective of, of this website, what are you hoping to achieve? The main objective really is to protect and preserve our heritage. You, you know that information, especially when it's in, in a material form, it ages. Now we're able to scan it, digitize it and put it in the system and take all those old manuscripts and put them in a vault. That you still preserve the original manuscript while anybody can access service and work with what they've got on the system. We now have the latest history now with Mali where they, they should have, I think, lost the, the oldest um, manuscripts. Now with, with Saris, we'll be able to scan that, have them on the system, but then put the original in, in a vault. So we will be able to preserve our history in, the, in that way. Fantastic. Yeah. I want to talk to you more about this. I want to talk to you about where the idea came from, where it's going to be going to, how big, how much you can actually store on this website. There's so much more to talk about. And I'm going to uh, continue this conversation in the previous hour, we, well, in the, ne the previous hour, in the next hour. Yeah. yeah, like time goes backwards. But right now, we're going to take a break. So we'll continue this conversation with uh, the CEO, Mabato Ramakoshi of, uh, of Sara. And uh, we're going to take a break. When we return, we'll bring you the news at 7 and uh, everything else from the Johannesburg studio. But we'll leave you with these sites uh, as we take that break.